Blackbird is an Apple original series about a convicted drug dealer who was recruited in prison by the FBI to elicit a confession from a suspected serial killer in exchange for freedom. The show stars Taron Egerton, Paul Walter Hauser, Greg Kinnear, and Ray Liotta in one of his final performances. The series consists of six episodes. We're here to discuss the first two, which premiered on July 8th. You're listening to today's episode. When you were doing research for Under the Banner of Heaven, you had the murderers spoiled for you, right? Yeah. It was like every single article because it mm-hmm. wasn't a TV show at the time. Maybe it's because I was like extra careful skimming the reviews to avoid spoilers, but I was able to successfully navigate the internet and not ruin the mystery for myself, which is nice because I look forward to seeing the remaining four episodes. Do you know what's actually true and what's false? Because a lot of this seemed like I was surprised when I said when I saw that it was based on a true story. All I know about the true story is that it's written by James Keene, obviously the main character here that it's called in with the devil a fallen hero a serial killer and a dangerous bargain for redemption that's a long title but i didn't look into what the actual because i knew that would tell me what happened next but so i'm not able to tell you what specifically is accurate but i do know that this is a fictionalized version and that it was created developed by dennis lehane who wrote shutter island mystic river Gone Baby Gone. So he was known for his novels. I was going to say, yeah, the name was very familiar. He was known for his novels. And then David Simon from The Wire came in and was like, hey, can you write TV? And he's like, sure, sure. I'll, I'll try it. So then he ended up writing for The Wire, Mr. Mercedes, Boardwalk Empire, The Outsider. This is the first time Wait, I Mr. think... Mr. Mercedes and The Wire were ran by the same person? No, not all the episodes. But like, you know how individual episodes yeah. are, are pulled just, in from different I writers? remember I had to watch like the first episode of Mr. Mercedes for one of the shows that we did. And knowing that the same person worked on some of those episodes episodes also worked on the wire they're like completely different shows honestly they seem sort of connected with his books mr mercedes uh the outsider both stephen king stuff yeah, right so like obviously he probably respects him as a horror genre element but and then shutter island was his own yeah. so i mean i don't think that that's too much of a jump for me to understand what is kind of impressive is that this is the first time that he's like developed a series on his own so he's written all the episodes and he's worked with the director before in the drop with tom hardy the drop. I never saw it, but I think you did, right? Michael yeah. R. Roskam. You're yeah. thinking of the wrong movie. Anyways, this series reminds me of The Night Of, Unbelievable, Dope Sick, and Under the Banner of Heaven. Those yeah. were the four that really came to mind as I was watching I never this. saw Under the Banner of Heaven, but it reminded me of that too, just from the research I did on it. But The Bear, because of like the hecticness and the setting, because both take place in Chicago. That's why I have as like similar. Mayor of Kingstown, The Tone. The Bear is really taken off. I think it's either coming out with its finale or just did, but like that show has, has really gotten positive yeah. praise over the last few yeah and then making a murderer the story and similarities especially like larry hill reminded me a lot of the branding kid i know that that was based because on his a, personality disorder also the way they portray him like you don't know if he actually did commit the murders or do not. do you think he committed the murders at the end of two episodes where he's done a confession where he's talked about details that he shouldn't know if he didn't commit i do the murder. i do think he did okay but. well it does still somehow keep that level of disbelief there where like maybe he didn't right yeah (laughs) and that's what i really liked about it that was the biggest mystery and that's what we're left with it's almost like the black phone in that way a little bit where it's like you don't know even though well you know the villain did it you know the the... villain did it but you didn't know like if the villain was ever going to let him go or not yeah we don't usually talk about the reviews to start our review but i want to kind of figure out what you thought of it before and then jump into what the actual well, okay. said. Actually, I'm going to follow your lead on like kind of the foundation podcast we did because I don't have a score for this. I need to see the full series before I really come to a conclusion about what I thought of it. My pros do outweigh the cons, but I'm not going to give it a rating. I will watch the rest of the series and then kind of come to my own opinion about it. Well, because it. I watched the first two episodes, I'd be happy to rate it. I'm giving it an eight. Okay. An eight? Okay. And I will say that IMDb has it as an 8.4. Rotten Tomatoes has it at a 98%, critic score, 96% audience score, Guardian has four stars for it, Roger Ebert said three and a half out of four with sharp dialogue, Decider said stream it. So those are all the positives. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit of criticism to take into account from the Washington Post. They said it seemed just a bit too comfortable in established patterns, and I kind of agree Mm -hmm. with them. 
Like Larry is the cliche van guy that's creepy, that might have like done something really terrible. You have sort of the archetype small town cop that you got in Under the Banner of Heaven with the uh, with this Brian guy yeah. who's tracking him down. So yeah, you do have sort of cliche characters. All of the characters actually come to think of it are a little bit cliche. But that doesn't mean that they're badly acted. No, or no. Or that the story's not true. In fact, Larry, the murderer, I thought he was the best actor of the whole thing. I thought his performance was like pretty great. Yeah, Paul Walter Hauser has gotten a lot of praise for yeah, his role. Yeah, very good. Karen Egerton as well, and of course, Ray Liotta. Um, right. It feels like it has an extra punch because he plays like the sixth dad in this, and we know that right. he passed away yeah. in May. So it's like just an extra... I don't want to say it adds to the role because obviously it's just a tragedy, but it definitely makes you feel more. For it's the almost character. like kind of a knife in the heart, especially when you see what his character has to go through in this episode, like going through a stroke and then like being homebound and all that type all, of stuff. All just through a couple conversations. It's yeah. not like he was taking up too much time in these episodes. I have a list of pros and cons. Do you want to talk about the episodes like in order at all? Do you want to go through like yeah, let's, yeah, what let's just start it off. We start off with Jimmy Taron Egerton. We see that he's a drug dealer. It's also Chicago, November. 1996 yeah like dope the, sick the 90s and one of the first things we see is he goes to a mr in between type warehouse this looks exactly like the mr in between warehouse they use in season three full with like the cars and everything yeah. inside criminals use the same warehouses <laughs> it's a well-known fact and uh yeah he has run like kilos of drugs and he meets raj well they're there to discuss the last deal that went down because apparently there's a disagreement as to who shorted who right and uh jimmy doesn't want to start anything but raj is like no i feel really bad about making it light last time this scene is all about about character development yeah. we're trying to learn who our care if if jimmy is like one of those hard ass scarface type of drug and he dealers, doesn't seem to be that or way. if yeah by the end of it you kind of learn that he's not or if he has a heart so raj takes jimmy to the back room and we see that danny who is jimmy's friend is tied to a chair he's beaten up and raj ends up about to shoot him before jimmy ends up offering him all the drugs or three kilos actually of drugs that he has in his bag to save danny's life yeah yeah um that seemed the first 10 minutes or so seemed a little off like I was interested in what was happening, but it doesn't really- It got really, my adrenaline pumping. It doesn't really come into play though later on That's in the true episode. too. It was in both my pros and cons for that exact reason. <laughs> yeah, and so the first thing we see, this does, this is when really this story kicks off. Jimmy meets the waitress Rochelle, brings her- Again, character development, yeah. showing him as sort of suave, cool. He's, apparently he was meeting someone at the restaurant who right. didn't show up and then he ends up having brings, sex with- Brings Rochelle home, yeah, yeah, has sex with her. And then this is where the show kind of really just threw me for a loop. So the next morning, Jimmy- Jimmy gets up, he's making himself a shake, he's happy. The, uh, it's a juice. Yeah, yeah, it's like some sort of juice cleanse. <laughs> he knows that the FBI is about to break into his house. I don't know if he does. I think he looks and he sees like a shadow. Yeah, but he smiles. And I think he knew that the FBI was coming because they break down his door. He doesn't do anything to try and hide a dead body now. Rochelle has died. We've read it different like, ways. I didn't think that he actually knew it was SWAT. I think I think he did because okay. I think he was a, I think he was able to tell by the hints. But yeah, I no. think he knew when his face was in his juice smoothie when they pushed him into <laughs> it. But before that, I think it, it came as sort of a surprise. Rochelle was sort of just like dead there. Yeah. She didn't wake up at all. Well, that was, well no, she <laughs> did was you think, dead. No, she was not dead. They he would have gone to jail for a whole different reason. Was otherwise, it, wasn't one he of was in jail for just necrophilia? for necrophilia? No, <laughs> no. I thought that that's what no. the judge said. No, uh, you're thinking of um narcotics or something oh, okay yeah I, I mean no absolutely you think he would have gone to jail for 10 years that's that was that was let's skip over that the judge sends him to jail for well first off i don't want to say that's where we first see lauren mccauley she's like the secondary main character and i thought that they knew each other at first because the way that she was calling him like jimbo and stuff and kind of almost she was just trying to get under his skin yeah yeah i thought that they knew but apparently that so was this the first FBI time they agent, met. yeah gets under his skin but he goes to jail his dad tells him okay take the plea deal He's told he'll take five years, but then he'll be out in four. On good and behavior. On yeah. good behavior. He goes to the judge. The judge says, no way. We're giving you 10 years. Please and he's in jail. Be, yep. And then what happens? And then Lauren uh, basically brings him into a separate room and is like, look, we know that there's this murderer named Larry Hill. Yeah. So the prosecuting attorney and the FBI person are working together on a different case. <laughs> and they're going to recruit him or want to recruit him and some other guy to go to a the maximum security prison where he's well, not at right now. They're in competition to see I mean, who is going to do they so. They say that he has a competitor for one of them is going to go to the maximum security prison to get the confession out of this Larry Hall who's alleged to have murdered all these girls. Right, yeah, yeah 14, I think, is uh, the number that they come up and with. And he doesn't want to, because he's like, well, if I get in trouble at that maximum security prison, I'm screwed. <laughs> then yeah. you can't protect me from getting added years onto my sentence there. Right. 
And so that would be even worse than what he's facing then. However, what happens that causes him to change his mind? Well, Ray Liotta, James, gets a stroke. Yeah, they're and, both named James. It's yeah. like James and James Sr. Right. So and, he's called Big Jim. <laughs> and his mom literally tells uh, Jimmy, like, hey, look, you need to take this thing. if you can His mom, who he, like, completely yeah. dislikes. He, he's on an okay, like, basis with his father. But, yeah, his mom, there's definitely some tension there. Uh-huh. Um, so Jimmy okay. originally says no and then he reads the case folder and he finds out about his dad and then he's like you know what i'm in and they're like no you're not because we have this other guy competing against you so they run yeah. him through a bunch I of like th- i found that funny like i mean because there I, was some humor in the show you yeah. knew that he was going to by the end take it i was a little confused why they decided to make the storytelling that's why i wanted to make sure if it was like true or not if that was how it actually went down because it felt to me like it kind the of fbi did. was kind of playing loose with yeah. him where they were like will they will will we allow you to do this or not and they after a few like interviews with him they're like finally okay you can go to maximum security prison you get to do this and so he shows up there at the very end of the episode two and he can't find larry at first well no he's scared to go into the maximum security prison at yeah first. he tries he to duck out of the last like, second, no i can't which do I think this we can all sympathize with yeah but then he finally gets there and at the very very end he makes eye contact with larry right at nighttime when everybody else is asleep and i did find it funny how it was like shawshank redemption style you could hear screaming of people yeah. at night because of how like terrible it is to live there yeah just prisons are not shown well this reminded me of reacher as well because in the first two episodes jack reacher goes to prison oh and kinda, yeah but he the, gets sunglasses yeah he gets sunglasses and he's also kind of trying to save this guy here it's literally just jimmy is alone in prison for a good i don't know 20 minutes of the episode yeah. and the secondary plot that you were talking about that's that focuses more on larry hall's backstory mm-hmm. a few years earlier right yeah detective, in like indiana or illinois indiana yeah D- detective miller uh we see that he's someone who because we saw a girl that's the very first thing we see in this episode the the first first episode episode. a girl is on a bike and she ends up um we learned that she was murdered later on it's like a double flashback because it's not even a flashback in the taron egerton storyline yeah or the jimmy storyline it's actually a flashback in the larry storyline yeah and in the re apparently when these reenactments like reenactments for civil war or revolutionary war happening a dead body soon shows up later on the detective is smart he says okay we have these reenactments happening and this guy in this van being known to like hang around and be creepy. And yeah. so he connected those two variables. Then he called the sheriff office to a different county and that talked to that detective who assured him it couldn't be Larry Hall because Larry Hall is just a weirdo, but he's <laughs> actually a cool dude. And then he goes and then the first sheriff goes to interview Larry anyways. And Larry has like an armada of FBI and also other sheriffs kind of defending him yeah. throughout the entire interview, which was weird. And then it took until like halfway through the next episode before they had concrete evidence and a confession from Larry stating that he killed them because he hates women. And then Gary, who is Larry's brother, <laughs> I found the, the name Gary and Larry. Larry. But yeah, Gary Larry. And also weird that like that fraternal twin thing where or actually I guess they were identical. No, because like one stole from the other twin. Yeah, like that was uh, weird traits. Yeah, but anyways, so Gary is almost assured that the FBI or the cops um, made like forced Larry to sign the letter, sign the uh, confession letter. They did sort of. They did sort of coerce yeah. that confession, and later on, it came back to bite them because a few years later, when Jimmy is actually going to prison, that is exactly when the appeal for Larry goes through, right? And he's almost released at that point. And that's so, that's definitely so Jimmy only has a plan. few only has a few weeks or less to try to convince this guy to tell him where the bodies are yes, or it, find out if he's even guilty and that especially comes into play because lauren was telling jimmy that he needs to approach larry slowly yeah. because otherwise larry's gonna know that something is going on so that's that's basically where the two episodes leave off and i can get into my pros and cons if you want me to yeah we can both get into our pros and cons my first pro is the acting obviously you have a lot of talent and like i said larry hall killed it for me he was definitely the best part of the entire show i thought that the way he played that killer like it could have been come off really like tacky but i thought they played it incredibly well so would you be surprised to learn that paul walter hauser has played this sort of role before in no. richard jewel richard jewel oh yeah the main character yeah. wow doesn't it seem like very good <laughs> casting in that case because it's almost like yeah he seems, on the nose he seems younger i mean i only ever saw the trailer but he seems younger in this show than he did when that uh, movie came out. In, like, yeah, I also right? gave credit to the acting, though. Um, it feels like Egerton seems to embrace the role. I know that he beefed up for it, and now he wants to yeah, do Wolverine. Yeah, jacked for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no one's phoning it in. Um, extra emotional twist with Leota, like we talked about, yeah. and the creepy guy knows how to be creepy. However, I still think that Cameron Britton 
gets the cake when it comes to being the best villain like portrayal of a real evil person because i think his his role in mind hunter is just it will never mm. be beaten he just does a great job you've never seen mind hunter so yeah. it's just an unfair comparison but as far as just the acting as a whole it's a huge plus um we, we both agree on yeah that. they obviously have a budget for it i assume that like this is apple right yep it's beautiful apple, apple, again, apple it's, just it's got in. that sleekness <laughs> with it now that's both a pro for me because it's like you get these amazing landscape shots but you also get sort of them showing it off a little bit too much for my liking in the first scene the way you get came across cars like- mansions suits watches fancy restaurants and i i'm starting to begrudge it because it's like really? they do it every single show so not only is it expected but it's also like flaunting it and everybody else we're going to pull in all these amazing movie uh actors yeah. and we're also going to pull in the best writers out there and we're just going to produce this content and show off our all our wealth while I all these see... other shows are just trying really hard to put out anything <laughs> i can see what you mean by expected yeah. but still to me i thought that it just like a it's it, both it, a pro it was very and a nice. for me yeah, yeah. So, um, and I want to see where it goes, the mystery angle of the show. Like, like I said, I'm going to continue to watch because, like, uh, I'm wondering what's going to happen. My, my thing is, like, the reason why I think he might not have done it, and I still think he probably did it. That's where it ends. Mm-hmm. But, like, he doesn't like touching people, and they made a big deal about that. Yeah. Like, he, so how would he murder someone? You know, yeah. and he's also super impressionable. Maybe he knows the the stuff about the the people because he um he was with someone who right. murdered them. Yeah, so that, that that could be it. And but it, but it also didn't feel like he was smart enough to kind of keep that closed. We don't know. We don't know. There's definitely some skeletons in his closet, though. What if it's what if it's Gary? It could be Gary. It could I didn't be, even think did about that. Did you recognize who Gary is? No, Gary is the guy from Believe. He was in uh, Quantico. Um, he was the main character. In, in <laughs> I never saw those. both of those. Okay. But yeah, I yeah, know. And then also there's like just some really creepy parts. I think it's at the beginning of episode two where you just see this girl walking home on campus. And then like once she passes a car, you don't see her like. That reminded me anymore. a lot of Shining Girls. I was like, yeah, I was like that. That was done very well. Speaking so, of which, Shining Veil, vale, which you did watch. Yeah. Would you, which do you think Greg Kinnear did a better job in? this one okay yeah, no. but you recognized it yeah yeah obviously um and then but yeah now i can get into my cons thankfully i don't have that many but first off well, i have a few more oh, pros yeah, if yeah, you want. Yeah. i just want to see if you agree with these i liked in the first 10 minutes we got that high stakes because it really did like we're not going to forget who raj is who danny is who yeah. jimmy is because they started off like that. I also really like that they, even in a serious show like this, had so much humor. For instance, the SWAT team yeah. while he was juicing, or things, the lines. Like, the writing was like, your energy makes me itchy. <laughs> when when uh, the sheriff was really intimidating. Uh, uh, Larry. Larry, Larry yeah. yeah. But And then also when Jimmy's like, what do I do in the case that I have to defend myself? And, he's, and then uh, the FBI tells him, don't get caught. <laughs> that reminded me a lot of a kind of American Made, where it was like the FBI in that storyline, even though Tom Cruise is like kind of supposed to be the hero, they, yeah. they kind, they're, they're kind of hands sketch. off. They're yeah. like, yeah, they're like... If it works, we'll take credit for it. If it doesn't, then uh, it's so kind of up long. to you, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did like the old cell phone reception joke that they kept on pulling in there because he couldn't ever hear the guy <laughs> right, yeah. because it was the 90s cell phones and then also the porn hustle that he was running mm-hmm. he, like the idea that you would go to prison and then suddenly still be able to not get hurt and not have <laughs> to join a game but still remain friends with everyone that's ridiculous but again that kind of goes to the character development exactly. that you were talking about yeah, yeah. yeah i liked his character as a whole it didn't feel overly cocky but he definitely was cocky. Mm -hmm. And then the order of the storytelling was very organic. It didn't feel like, even though we kept on switching different time periods and different um, central characters, I, I still felt like it all made sense. I wasn't jerked around. It never that became was like, too messy. That was exactly like Dope Sick and Unbelievable, where they were able to tell me a story and keep me involved and not let me get confused with anything, yeah. which, which I liked. The interrogation scenes is what makes this type of show different than Law and Order, because right. it's very easy to make yourself seem corny in that route. But like, if you have a good interrogation scene, then that can even make the best scenes of your show. And I think yeah. the ones with Larry, like you were talking the, about. Especially the very ending scene of the first episode, that was like a good 10 minutes, but I was entertained throughout the whole time. Yeah, because you never knew what he was going to say next or yeah. how quickly he would turn evil. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's about it for, for my pros. Yeah. yeah, so now going into my cons, like I said, I don't have that many, but um, one of my biggest, I guess, problems with the show is the fact that there was nothing there was no real twist that got me like oh my god like that there was no real intrigue like everything was kind of laid out the truth wasn't good enough for you well everything was just kind of laid out in such a way that it just kind of 
played out. For example, Jimmy is told, hey, look, you're, we're, we might possibly give you this job where you're going to need to learn about Larry Hall. And then in the end, yeah, he just goes to prison. And at the very end of episode two, he meets Larry Hall. Like there was nothing there that was like, any I think it's just a lot of setup. Difference. But yeah, it's only six episodes. So you you kind of want there to be more. Um, yeah, like, I guess I want there to be some type of thing that I'm not expecting. I feel but... like there will be it's not it's just saving. Oh, it no, no, I, and I, I even hope. have here that there this show definitely has like potential to be really good but in the first two episodes especially when you're one third of the way through your story it's like there was there was nothing it was just kind of like yeah one, one thing i was leads still to another. surprised by enough of the stuff like what were you surprised by larry's confession for one like when he started going into how he folded the girl's clothes that surprised me i knew jimmy was going to agree to go i didn't expect him to want to leave at the very end and that they had to like coerce him back into doing it yeah but like those are just kind of small things in terms of the story it wasn't like there was anything that was that different it also felt like at the very beginning like we were going to watch a drug story like a drug yeah no that is true that's so it kind of changed its whole premise for me later on and so uh, that's a surprise. I don't know. I, I give it more leeway in that respect than it seems like you are. And sometimes I felt it kind of hard for Jimmy to be the like anti-hero, the protagonist, just because he did kind of, kind of come across as unlikable. Yeah. Know? When he was talking to the FBI lady. Uh, Being very sarcastic. and Not you know. just that, but I found that there was too much like, will they, won't they flirting behind. Yeah, I don't She's want that. She's an FBI that, yeah. <laughs> special agent. He's a prisoner. Like, I'm not looking for a soap opera here. Right. I don't need the that. Con- and, it, and it's going to continue because she's going to be playing his girlfriend yeah. at the prison, yeah. which that may have actually happened. But the idea that they were flirting so heavily <laughs> when he she just sent him to jail. Yeah. No, I was a little ridiculous. I wasn't for it. But that was that's kind of actually all my cons. I had a few nitpicks as far as like when he went to the maximum security prison, he had to empty his pockets. He had to get rid of everything. He's not going to be able to keep that gel in his hair. Like, it's just something I know is not going to come back and play in the show. <laughs> I, didn't, that, I didn't think about it too yeah, much, but yeah. And then also my biggest complaint was probably that his plea deal got changed without his knowledge. Like, it's a contract. He has to know what he's agreeing to. Yeah. The judge cannot willy-nilly, from my understanding, I'm like 80% sure on this, just change how many years you get if you've agreed with a deal with the prosecuting attorney. And if the prosecuting attorney is trying to screw you over, then you're allowed to say that is not the deal that we, like he had a lawyer. There should have been some- There should have been more to it, yeah. Some way in which he could have refuted that. No, I I agree with that, yeah. I didn't think about like that story-wise, but yeah, and and that's the big problem. And they also didn't tell the parents, sorry, when when he left. It feels like that could be a crucial error because they could raise a fuss about it. And it's like, why would the FBI want to raise attention that this guy has moved here yeah. for no good reason? Unless, they, yeah, all they needed to do was make a quick phone call and yeah. say, hey, your kid's been moved. No, I, I agree with that. But yeah, so like I said, I'm reserving judgment for it. But I did I, I did like the first two episodes that I watched. You said you'd give it an eight, right? Yeah, I'd give it an eight. I'd tell everybody would watch it and enjoy the show. Because <laughs> yeah. as far as true crime goes, there's like a saturated market. We know that. And again, so just Apple focus can, on the good ones. Apple and this is can a good one. add another one to its canon. Like you were saying, Apple is quickly becoming like one of the best streaming services after yeah, this. And, and it's funny because and... in like 2019, they came out with one that was a little bit similar. It was like this podcast we went into two. Uh, it was like Truth Be Told or something. Octavia Spencer. Yeah, Octavia Spencer. Yeah. yeah, and Aaron Paul. And that one didn't do too well. I don't think it was. A... Oh, I remember. Yeah, I remember the ads for it. And there was even like an article written that was like, this is why Apple TV sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's funny how far it's gone in just a couple years yeah yeah so thanks for listening we'll see you on the next episode hope you enjoyed this one bye bye